Laura Splann grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, where her father and sister worked in the medical industry. Early on, Laura herself thought of becoming a veterinarian, and at UC Irvine, she began by studying biology. Eventually, she switched her major to visual art, but her fascination with the biological sciences has never faded. Blood as a medium can be difficult to work with. The way that I use it is actually very simple. Um, I just draw the amount that I need to do the work. When blood is on the paper, it starts to change color over time. So it gets darker almost immediately. There's a certain amount of predictability in working with blood that you don't have in a lot of other arts and crafts materials. For example, glues and epoxies and things like that are, maybe I'm just not as knowledgeable about them as I am my own blood. Wallpaper samples is a series of actual wallpaper samples that I've pulled out of books. So they're not my own designs, they're, they're tracing the actual designs on the wallpaper using my own blood taken from my fingertips. The wallpaper series, as well as some of Laura's other pieces, were featured in a recent exhibit entitled The Meat Show at the San Francisco Arts Commission Gallery. I kind of like the idea of the wallpaper bleeding, of it coming through the walls and um, expressing something that's hidden in the home or hidden by the history of these, these patterns and what they evoke. I think the, my use of domestic imagery and domestic objects and materials is a way to give people a familiar entry into the work. How much blood does it take to do that? And B, how do you keep it from coagulating? How do you keep it thin? It takes just a small amount of blood. For some people, it's neutral. For some people, it's fascination. And for some people, it's repulsion. I'm not interested in only making work that is pleasing or pretty or beautiful or um, funny. Laura works in a wide variety of media, but the methods and materials of the medical sciences are a common theme throughout everything she does. Growing up in the suburbs, a pristine suburban home where the carpet was always vacuumed and the counters were always clean, I think that I actually just as much as I was influenced by my dad working in medical industry, I was influenced by that kind of feminine touch. This is the uh, software file for SARS, for the SARS virus. The software digitizes them and turns them into stitches. Good. <laughs> I've got another SARS I need you to output. Okay, let's see what you have. Doilies is a series of machine embroidered doilies that are in the shape of different viral structures. The series includes SARS, influenza, herpes, hepadna, and then that's imported into the specific machine embroidery software. Her design is 87,214 stitches. It's done 2,400 and it's taking 143 minutes at 700 stitches per minute. All right, it's done. There you go. Let's look at it. Looks great. A virus is something that we have a lot of fear around, both rational and irrational. A lot of that fear being culturally constructed and putting it in the context of the doily, which is something that, again, is this comfortable domestic object. And the doily originally was used on the backs of chairs to protect chairs from the oil and people's hair. I really like using materials that have their own history, that are already loaded with meaning.
The UCSF library has been a good source of material for me. Um, I've been going there to get the x-ray image books. The first thing I usually do is go online and see if I can find the images I need. The problem with that is that they're all low resolution, and a lot of times I need much higher resolution images that I need to either scan um, in some way to use for my works. Right now I'm working on a series of three images that are um, backlit Duratrans photographic images that are going to hang in the windows of the Richmond Art Center. And this series is, it's a series of collages that are digitally manipulated images of x-rays um, combined with domestic objects. A lot of design for um, products and furniture really mimics the human body anyway. So I was kind of interested in mirroring that more literally. If you create a piece that makes the viewer look twice or think twice, um, if you create a piece that is not immediately apparent, that actually has to unfold a little bit um, yeah, through looking at it and through um, thinking about your own personal experiences with the images being presented, then um, that double take is something that I think lasts. At the Richmond Art Center, Laura has assembled several recently completed series, including this one, entitled Modifications. It's um, a series of photographs that I took of scars and scabs and hairs and moles, and then digitized the images and manipulated them in the computer. Usually I kind of try to create a seductive image and then have something else less seductive be revealed. That is beautiful. It kind of takes the um, scariness out of, uh, you know, like blood and viruses. I think art can serve the role of having a lasting impact on the viewer and the way that they view the world. That's my interest in visual art, really, is reconstructing the way people look at everything, not just art. <laughs>